Now I normally don't like doing block for block tutorials as many of you already know, but I've put together a really nice design for a compact, efficient house that still looks great. It's really flexible, now let me show you how to make it. These are the blocks that you're going to need when making this house. Now if you can't get your hands on these specific ones, don't worry, it's very flexible. Wait until the end of the video and it'll all make sense. So we're going to start with a three block high log pillar. With a three block gap, we will then make a five block high pillar. We then count six spaces to the right and do exactly the same. So this is the frame of our very small house and it is quite small three by six in the center. We're going to fill out the floor now just to save ourselves some time and you can choose any block that you want for this. It's your personal preference. I chose wood for the availability. On the top, we're now going to do the roof before the walls, interestingly enough. I think this is just a personal trait when I build. I like to fill the frame, then the roof, and then fill in the walls afterwards. So you just need to create a slab roof which goes up half a block at a time, making sure that the overhang is actually one full block thick. We then go ahead and link up the rest of the frame and then simply fill in the middle. Now we're going to come back to the roof because there will be some extra work done later as an additional detail. But for now we can create two little overhangs at the front and the back. They don't need to be anything too special, just a straight overhang on the long sides will do for the time being. But now we're going to work on the walls themselves. Now this is going to take a little longer, I've selected two blocks that work really well together, hardened clay and jungle wood planks. I placed down a spruce door because it's my favourite, and then started to put down a mixture of hardened clay and jungle wood planks, trying to keep them equal, but not in any particular pattern. You'll also notice that I placed down staircases, also made of jungle wood planks, into the walls themselves. This is to try and add some depth to the build. Because it's a very small house, and we're trying to maximise space on the inside, the frame is not a block forward to the walls, so we have to find other ways of adding depth. And one way to do this is to utilize the staircase block. It works really well with this style of build. And you can see I try to place the blocks without having too much of a pattern. It's a messy organized, and I know that's kind of hard to grasp, and you can copy me block for block if you're struggling to get your composition correct. But the key thing that makes this work is the fact that these two blocks complement each other and they work really really well. You can also see that I've left some space for windows just above another jungle wood staircase which we're going to fill with a stained glass pane. You can choose any colour you like, I chose white just because I thought it would fit the composition of this build very nicely. If you can't be bothered to stain it, just use a normal glass pane. We're then going to decorate it by adding some spruce fence gate and a trapdoor above it, and again that just helps add some depth. It doesn't cost too much and it has a really great effect on the build. So now that we've got the basis of the house, we're going to do some improvements to the roof. I personally find it a little bit rigid, so I'm just going to add some extra staircases here and there to make it look a little more weathered and a little bit more rustic, one of my favourite styles. On the side here where it was really too straight to look natural, I decided to add more slabs to make the overhang again look more rugged and more natural looking for this kind of build. You can decide how you want to tackle this, whether you want to have it completely perfectly straight or whether you want to follow in my footsteps. In the middle or wherever you would like, you can add a chimney by simply adding some cobblestone and take it in whatever direction you want, finishing it off with some cobblestone walls. If you have access to cobwebs, add them for the smoke effect. If not, no worries. And then I just add a slab on the top to finish it off. There we have our house basis. Now there's two reasons why the shape of the house is this way. The first one is for space on the interior, which we will come to in a minute. The second is for this. It helps to add a farm attached to the side of this house to complement the shape that we've gone for. Now you can choose whatever shape farm you want. I just made a very, very quick one. The main point of this video is the house, not the farm. A small cobblestone wall, 
attached to the framework should suffice with some crops inside. At the front I added a nice textured pathway and on the roof I didn't like the fact that it was completely perfect so I added a bunch of slabs to rough it up and make it look again more weathered and a little more textured. It's hard to work with a build this small, but I think out of everything, it's really nicely detailed. It has a fantastic shape that complements the farm next to it, but there is a few more things that we need to do to complete this build. The main thing is the interior. There's a specific reason why the build is this shape. So let's go into first person and do it. So we need to work with Quake Pro so that you can see what's going on here. The first thing I'm going to do is just replace some of the floor blocks with staircase to make it again more weathered and have a little bit more depth. I had a bed in the corner and a shelf just above it with a chest. There's going to be plenty of storage in this house despite being so small. I'm now adding a furnace and a chimney that actually links up to what we made on the roof earlier, which I find is actually a really nice touch. Not a lot of things integrate the exterior into the interior like that. From this point on you pretty much have creative rain. I decided to add a few more carpets just to the back door entrance and a few more furnaces, but what the shape of this house really lends to is utilizing storage space. So by adding a simple shelf in that space where it slopes upwards, we can actually add a bunch of chests or furnaces or whatever you really want there. And then you've kind of got your entire house. You can add a crafting table and it's not bad. I mean, it's not a big house. That's the whole point of the video. It's meant to be incredibly compact and it's completely up to you how you want to design the interior. You can switch around furnaces, change them for chests, or you could even make a little table if you prefer something with a little more aesthetic. I even added a couple of paintings just to give it that little more homely feel. And that's it. We have finished the exterior and now the interior. But there's one more point that I want to make about this house. Yes, it has a nice shape. Yes, it's got a lovely texture, but I want to point out how flexible this build is. On the inside of the original concept that I made, I actually made a little basement, but I didn't include it in the tutorial because it's fairly generic. But that's another idea that you could use if you wanted to add even more space to this very unique starter house. But one of the main points that I do want to make is something that many of you might have already picked up on. It's the fact that the block choices are not ideal. These blocks come from four separate biomes. Getting your hands on these can be a real pain, but if you're willing to put the effort in, you can get that exact model or you could work with what's nearby. This build works really well with different palettes and color harmonies. The birch forest will also produce a really nice result along with some sandstone which is very readily available. You don't even need to use spruce wood for the roof. You could use normal wood or you could use a dark, you can use whatever is near you. If you really can't find much, as long as you've got some kind of wood to hand, you can even use just stone, stone brick, or whatever's around. The more creative you are with what's available to you, the better. Like I said, this design in general just really suits flexibility, and you can utilize the space however you want. I actually avoided making those super efficient, compact houses because I wasn't sure how to make them look good, but I'm actually really, really pleased with this design. I think it's really different to other videos that I've seen on the subject, and I wanted to throw my two cents in there. Lots of people want to know how to make a quick, small house. This build took me a grand total of about 15 minutes in creative, so if you gather the resources that I suggested at the start of the video, I don't think you'll have too much problem in producing something similar to what I made. I usually don't do block for block tutorials, and I'm extremely sorry if you were disappointed in me for doing one, but I would like to please both worlds. I don't think doing a small house tutorial really works in the creative sense, because I feel it's a lot more limiting having a very compact area to work with, so I actually felt that for this one time only that a block for block tutorial really works well, especially for those people that want to have a brand new house on fresh on a server that looks good. And that was the key point of this video. 
That's it everyone, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you have any suggestions, you know where the comment section is, goodbye!